Well, I think the problem is with the word settle. That that has a negative connotation, which if I'm if I'm settled in my thoughts, I sleep well. So I don't think it's a negative word. Hmm. And speaking of settling, you're listening to episode 231 of the Illustrious Gentleman podcast. He's Scott. I'm Ryan. We're working on Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes for DC Comics. This is the sh- this is the show that comes on after Friends, and they're just banking on you being too lazy to change the channel. That's right. First issue of Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes is out in January and can be pre-ordered now. So tell your local comic shop to add it to your pull list. And if you'd like to support this little program, head over to TIGSHOW.com, T-I-G-S-H-O-W.com. Click on the Support the Pod link to find out all the ways you can support this podcast. All the ways. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice. All the Richmond, sexy ways. Nice Richmond Greyhound uh, shirt you got there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Kent, spirit animal. And this train is never ending. But yes, I was late to the, I, I did bump us because... I was watching Selena plus Chef on HBO Max, and I was falling in love. Have you watched it? Don't shake your fucking head at me. Have you? No, watched I haven't it? watched it. I, I, I don't. Do you I, not like to cook, or do you not like to look at pretty girls while they cook? Or I'm what's not, your problem? Yeah, it, it, typical cooking shows like just watching somebody cook is not my thing. <clears throat> if you want to talk about. Uh, um, a charming host on a, on a cooking show. Um, oh, I'm gonna, it, I, I'm gonna blank on her last name, but nailed it is my jam. Nicole, what's her name? Oh, God. Never Brian? I don't know. I don't remember her last name now. Nailed it on Netflix? No. It's, uh, it, yeah, it's just, a, it's a cooking show, but instead of, people that know what they're doing they have like amateur chefs on and they have a, like a professional chef that makes this thing and then he says here you make it so it's it's almost like uh like um yeah it's like the uh, uh, pinterest fails of cooking shows it's hilarious so you like to see people fail so that you feel better about yourself. No, but no, they're trying though. Right. Well, this Selena plus chef, she doesn't know how to cook. They're teaching her how to cook. That's fine. Yeah, sure. Whatever. It's just, yeah, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad. I liked it enough that my wife knows that I liked it enough that she changed the channel so that she wouldn't watch it without me. Ah. Uh, and now I'm super glad I settled for my wife because she would do that for me. <laughs> Uh, what are you drinking tonight, uh, Mr. Kent? I made myself a, a whiskey sour with a base of E-Dub Bib, which is Evan Williams' bottled and bond for those not-so-hip cats. That's right. I got a bottle right next to my couch, which is where we should all keep our 100-proof bourbon. That's right. Okay. Uh, I am drinking. Oh wait, why don't we? If no one's ever listened to it, what what do you make your old fashioned with? So you got your 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 bourbon. No whiskey sour. Oh whiskey sour. So sweet sour mix bourbon. Easy peasy. Rocks. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, I am drinking a uh, finish. Oh, in, in all of the the whiskey sour things, you look up online. If you look up a recipe, or if you use a, a the thing with the paper, a book. Um, Okay, it, yes. it, it, it calls for egg whites, and I've never used an egg white in my whiskey sour because it sounds fucking gross. Yeah, it does sound gross. Uh, speaking of things that could be gross, I'm drinking a uh, Finnish long drink. Uh, strong. So they make a blue can that's 5.5%. This is the black can. It's 8.5%. Oh, my it's God. Bre- it's brewed by the Long Drink Company out of Utica, New York. Uh Gin and citrus soda cocktail in a can, um, eight and a half percent, like I said. Uh, so Jay Stevens on totalwine.com uh, gave it five stars and says, just normally it's 
or normally I'm fine with the OG finished long drink. That's 5.5%, but this one's not a pussy. Turn up the party. It's 8.5% super crushable. Wow. So yeah. I think Jay, St- Jay Stevens might have some anger issues that he has to it's deal like a, with. It's like 180% of the other one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know you could leave reviews on TotalWine.com. That might be my new go-to. Uh, because if they're all bringing the heat like Jay Stevens is. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, Jen, I like Jen. Jen's my yeah, go-to. You, you have to alcohol. imagine how lame the average total wine shopper is. And then understand that half of them are even lamer than that. See, so I can make a, I can make something out of myself being a being a, a person who leaves reviews on TotalWine.com. I could that could be my thing where I'm known for something I'm known for. Oh, you could like be the funny the, one, the good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, gin yeah. is my jam. People rolling and, out of bed in the morning. Oh, what is mm. uh, what's Ryan Cody seventy five left to review on today on TotalWine.com. On first uh, nose, this uh, smells like grapefruit juice. Huh. Speaking of grapefruits, have you ever had a pomelo? I don't know what that is. It's slightly. Did you see so- this on your show? No, I've I've been a pomelo fan for many years. Wow. So basically, when when all these normies get grapefruits, they normally put a little sugar on it because it's a little tart, like Jamie tart. But a pomelo doesn't need any sugar. A pomelo is a slightly sweeter grapefruit uh, that you don't you don't need to sweeten. Yes. Yeah, not as well known, but still pretty good. So not a Keely. Keely's pretty well known. Or She's Sam. Like an Instagram model. Yes. Yeah. About to blow up. Good now. About to blow up. Now that I'm now that I'm putting Pomelos on blast. <laughs> Wait, blast is a negative thing. Now that I'm putting Pomelos on the, I'm putting my spot out. People are going to be buying up Pomelos left and right. Yeah, you got the wreck. Yeah. Um. So yeah, finish long drink, strong drink. Eight and a half percent gin with natural grapefruit and juniper berry flavors. Mm. I'm excited about it. I got it at the market. It was three fifty. Uh, yeah, so I've already talked about uh, uh, Selena plus Chef on HBO Max. Everyone should check it out. Um, wh- anything you want to talk about in our world famous Tig Dog segment? I don't know. You got some other things here. Well, yeah, but I'm not going off our our shared notes. Oh. I had to I had to doctor mine into a PDF in Photoshop. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you right now. Yeah, I, no, I got my notes, but I don't know if you put notes down. I did put notes down. Okay, so there. I can't. I can't see. Your oh, notes. you got your PDF. Yes, you, that's what you said. I'm not working off the shared doc. I'm I'm flying solo right now. So why don't you tell me about something you recommend or not okay. recommend? I started Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Did you not By see it last year? No, I have not watched oh. it, nor have I watched Blind Manor. Ooh, but you're in for a treat. Based on the strength of Midnight Mass, I went back and I'm taking a gander at Mike Flanagan's OG Netflix series. And I'm four his, episodes in. His oeuvre. And it's uh it's doing it for me. Uh I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of ghost fiction, like haunted house stuff. I think I've been uh burned too many times by garbage Mm -hmm. like 90 percent of the ghost movies modern day ghost movies are straight crap yeah and like 99 percent of them don't even have like Whoopi goldberg in them but it it feels like if m night Shyamalan hadn't gone batshit crazy i i feel like that's mike flanagan is is uh fill in that niche okay it's, uh, it, it seems like he's uh he's an actor's dream as a as a writer or director just uh paragraphs worth of dialogue in like one long shot i, I imagine they just they just come all over the place reading those scripts yeah yeah Oh, you're in for a treat then. You got like 16 episodes of good stuff up ahead. 
Yeah, I hope so. And I know he's done some features. I don't know that any of it is original stuff, but I think he did. Didn't he do it? No, I don't believe so. Oh. He did Oculus, I think, with what's her fucking face? Um, you know, the one with the face. Um, Karen Gillan. Uh, she does have a face. Yeah. But sometimes it's quite part nice. robotic. Sometimes it's partly robotic and purple. Uh, yeah, I watched. Uh, well, good for you. I'm glad that you have uh, your Mike Flanagan uh, verse to watch. Um, Faster I watched, than Mike Flanagan's fucking dog. I watched uh, Val, that Val Kilmer documentary on Prime. Yeah. Uh, good documentary. It takes, and, and actually, I learned a lot from it because I'm still in the process of making my own documentary, which uh, I hopefully people have forgotten about because it's super late. So when it hits, people will be like, wow, look at mm-hmm. this. It's neat. Um, and I want them to say it's neat. Yeah. That, that's my goal. Uh, so Meat. he's very, so he's very honest in it, and I realize uh, I'm, Says I'm not Steve on TotalWine.com. Yeah, I'm not quite up there as far as notoriety as Val Kilmer. So me it, being honest, me being honest about my life isn't the same. But for the, uh, a good chunk of the small viewing audience that will be my documentary, yeah. they know me. So it could work in the same way. Like I gotta, I gotta not worry about being. Uh, like I'm obsessed with like, oh, before I film any more stuff, I want to lose like 10 pounds. And then I see like fat ass Val-, Val Kilmer on this. And I'm like, he's he's not wearing a shirt 90% of the time. I'm like, okay. So I feel a little better. But uh, it's yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I could do that. That, yeah, that documentary, I'm not sure if I could watch it. The Val documentary. So it's a yeah. good documentary, it's, but it's it's like artsy fartsy. You know, like he's all he does is talk about his art and he, okay. how he approaches it and how he's chasing it and all this stuff. Uh, you know, now he does like because uh, spoiler alert, now he's he's had like throat cancer, so he yeah. can't act anymore. So now he does like paintings and and digital collages and and old school collages and that's he's not it's not bad. Uh, it's not it, it's actually for for if I didn't know it was Val Kilmer, I'd be like this ain't terrible. Um, it, but, are they uh, as good as the what are they the soul bottles? Oh, they put the Richard Grieco soul bottles to shame. Oh, Richard good. Grieco should should mentor or sorry, Val Kilmer should be a mentor for Richard Grieco hmm. in how to create modern art. Maybe Richard Grieco can sign up for Val Kilmer's master class course. That's right. So, it, but it's really honest. It's really uh, interesting. Uh, super depressing. Uh, yeah it looks like, like he's he, he turned out to be like a more sympathetic steven seagal yeah but i think i think if he hadn't if he hadn't had his issues he would have a renaissance you know the way like john travolta did like i think we'd be seeing like 50s so? and yeah i think so um but yeah like in this he's doing like fan signings and convention appearances and it's just depressing as shit like everyone's like telling him like like they just show like 20 people in a row, give them a top gun thing to sign. And they say, can you write, you can be my wingman anytime. And like all of them say the same phrase, like he's signing the same thing over and over again. Uh, he was in like Austin and they did a viewing of uh, Wyatt Earp. And like, he's like the only guy there. So he's like sitting in like a saloon and people are just funneling in to take pictures with him and talk to him. And they're all like cosplaying and shit. And he's wearing like a, like a Lakers cap and like a Hawaiian t-shirt, you know, like he's not cosplaying. Um, and he even talks about it in the documentary, which I thought was great. He's like, he's like, he's like, there's times I don't want to, there's times I'm mad that I have to do this, you know, which is what I always feel like these dudes at cons <laughs> are feeling like. And then he backtracks a little and says like, Oh, but everyone, you know, it's nice to, to everyone's happy. I'm here. It's nice to be loved. I get that too. But yes, he wishes he was off filming something and not sure sitting in a director's chair in a back of a saloon somewhere, uh, you know, with some fucking doof- doofus in a cowboy hat and shit, you know, calling him Mr. Kilmer. Uh, yeah. You got anything else on your, but I recommend it. I smash it or I, yeah, I smash it. You ship it. I ship it. Uh, yeah. Uh, the movie that I meant to talk about last episode that I forgot the name of was It Follows, and it was great. I loved it. 
I want more of that sort of stuff. It was genuinely creepy and fresh and it it's in the same vein as Flanny's stuff. That's what we call them. Oh, I call them flans. Flans. <laughs> like multiple flan. Like yeah, like when he makes a lot of dessert breads. Uh yeah, just s- slow, long takes, really yeah. atmospheric. N- there's nobody that shows up. Uh there's no they don't they don't Skype an expert or go to a uh, an occult bookshop or somebody and have some dumb character dump two minutes worth of exposition on you to let you know what's happening. It, it's just, this is what's happening. You're experiencing it just like everybody else. Is it's great. Way? It's great. It's, it, 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 it's, 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 yeah, that's, I'm not being hyperbolic. It's great. I loved it. I have to find out who, the writer and the director were, I'm guessing money is on. It's the same person because all the best things are. Yeah. The, the thing I know about that is that it had a cool, like a uh, promotional campaign with like a cool, like old school car, some neon lights. Uh, that's the one with the blonde chick, right? Like it's like a, like a high school movie or high school age movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, yeah cool, cool uh, art direction and the promotional stuff. Everything I saw for it just looked kind of cool. It didn't look shitty or cheap. Yeah, it's um, just watch it. It's great. Like, it's not for everybody. That sort of stuff isn't for everybody. My, uh, I guess my thirteen-year-old likes scary stuff, but he likes the stabby killer slasher stuff. Right, and it's. I'm not going to say you're stupid if you like that kind of stuff, well, he's but I'm kid. also not going to not say that. Probably shouldn't say that about your children on a, on something that's going to be documented forever. Hmm. This is the All episode. Right. This is the episode I'm going to submit the to the time Smithsonian. Capsule. Yeah, this is the episode that's going to the Smithsonian, right? For official record, uh, this will yeah, just I, be the one they happen to play sure. during the wake. That's right. During your wake, he'll hear me talking about how stupid he is. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Uh, And but you know what? I'll bring him a Blu-ray of It Follows at your wake. So he'll hate it. Yeah. Sorry. I'll be I'll be his new I'll be his new father figure. He'll need one. Uh, I'll put it on the list. Uh, The last note I have here for me is. I watched Blood Simple last night. I'd never seen the first Coen Brothers movie, Blood Simple. I've never heard of it. From 84. It's like a, like a, I guess like a Texas neo-noir. I wouldn't say Western. It's just set in, in a small town in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, 1984, first Coen Brothers film. Uh, Francis McDormand's first role. Uh, just uh, solid writing, a fun crime movie. A, a Coen Brothers movie, as you expect. Great characters. Um, I had never seen it, but it's one of those things you should all like. Every time I thought about like becoming a screenwriter, that's one of the screenplays that always pop up in these lists. Is Blood Simple? Yeah, okay. It's like um, that, and like Bottle Rocket. And- yeah, uh, and from from the from the jump, Francis McDormand acts circles around. It looks like a community theater production with Francis McDormand <laughs> just running shit left and right. Uh, uh, what is it? M. Emmett Walsh is in it. He he holds up. Uh, but Francis He's McDormand just, just acting runs so over. hard at everybody. Oh, it's just uh, she melting she just, their faces. She's fantastic in it, and it, it's great because it's not more than it should be. It's a ninety-four minute crime neo noir film that just tells a story. Like it's just a basic story, nothing flashy, no special effects, just solid writing, solid directing, solid cinematography. As the kids are wont to say, C- "Cine, yeah, that's right, solid cine, yeah." Hmm. Uh, so yeah, I also recommend Blood Simple. Highest recommendation, I think it's on uh, HBO Max as well. So oh, okay. uh, do it, do it, watch a couple of the Selena plus chefs. Jump over to uh, Blood Simple, and then cleanse your palate with a couple more Selena plus chefs. <laughs> The one with uh, so there's a Selena plus chef with uh, Roy Choi, 
who uh, makes like a Korean American fusion Asian guy. Uh, but he he's on it, and his daughter is of the age that she grew up watching Disney Channel with Selena Gomez on it. So at one point, he makes his daughter come on the camera because it's 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 like a Zoom show. Like they did it during quarantine, so they're separate. They're not in oh, a studio. I don't like so, that. So he pulls his daughter over and introduces her, and she's like all super shy. And then at one point, when the meal's ready. Selena Gomez goes, oh, I have to call my friend who loves to cook. Like one of my best friends loves to cook. And now that I'm learning to cook, she's so happy. So she FaceTimes with uh, Taylor Swift. And then he calls his daughter back in on his end. And so they put the Taylor Swift. So so his daughter's kind of meeting Taylor Swift. And his daughter just like starts shrinking back in the kitchen <laughs> and like doing this and like walking as far away from like the camera. But she's still in the shot because the whole kitchen's in the shot. It's just adorable. Um so that's that's your that's your perfect Thursday night, everybody. All right, those two Good. shows. Anything else on your list that I can't see? Um, yeah, I, I came. Or I subscribed to a new YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Some More News, um, uh, with a host with the fantastic name of Cody Johnston. Uh, uh, it's it's very funny. It, it he, um. It's very left leaning because you know I'm out. No, why? You woke. Because I, I podcast hosts. I well, left being right, as in correct. Um, but he he's extraordinarily funny, and he 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 holds his own against Colbert and like John Oliver and that sort of stuff, and it's very good. And I guess they do. A YouTube episode every two weeks, but they do a podcast version every week. So, uh, yeah, check that out if, if you like funny stuff. It's called um, More What News? Some, some more, news. more News. Not to be confused with some good news, right? That was the John Krasinski one. Some good news, oh, good news. Good, good news. Is what he was okay. Yeah. Then he sold it or something, and everybody sure, got really upset because the good news was all the digits at the end of that check. <laughs> right. Look, well, the good po- news is no. The good news is a different show. Yeah, he had to be. He had to get busy bulking up. He couldn't be doing these this fucking Zoom show right the whole time. He's got to grow a beard. Big Richards, you mean? He, uh for, for Jack Ryan. For Jack Jacked. Ryan. Jack Ryan. Man, I don't like that show. Uh, the first season was good. The second season no, was... Eh. I, oh, he's insufferable. He's always the smartest guy in the room. Yeah, he's a fucking doctor who uh, does complicated math and shit. He's an analytics Awful. doctor. I hate it. He's got a doctor in analytics. Doctorate in analytics. Sure. Yeah. He, he doesn't have the charm. Believe it or not, John Krasinski, Jim, does not have the charm of Alec Baldwin or Harrison Ford. Well, he's not a murderer. He may be a better Jack Ryan than Ben Affleck or Chris Pine. Well, he didn't kill anybody, so that makes him the second best Jack Ryan. Oh. Oh. Too soon. Well... Not for, uh, not for everyone. Affleck only killed the one hobo. All right. Anything else before we get into it? I don't think so. Okay. So uh, this was kind of a, a, a joint idea spawned by you. Spear, uh, um, I took over as I want to do. So you wanted <laughs> to talk about you wanted to talk about story, and then you yeah. mentioned like. Like, let's hear some pitches and see how we would twist them, how we would produce them, how we might run with them, Um, which I was happy about because I like the idea of getting fed something and then feeding off of that. Uh, So you were saying, why don't we why don't we reach out to our Twitter followers and see if they could pitch us ideas? And then we both agreed that it would be a very short podcast if that was how that went. Yeah, I, I, I was afraid we would get our feelings hurt. Or we would hurt feelings because we might know these people. I mean, they're they're listener, so we might know them or whatever. 
Uh, so I found a website called uh, writers.coverfly.com, and it was just a list from spring 2021 of, I, I guess, people uploaded their own ideas or maybe they were repped. I don't know how it happened, but it was a long list of writers and their pitches. Yeah, this was like, like 50. There's yeah, like, I actually, because I thought how many, that. I I how many were there? Do you know? I don't know, because. I thought I didn't know how deep you were going to go. So at one point I just scrolled all the way to the page ended and went backwards. Uh, cause, cause we want to try to not hit the same ones. Um, yeah. it'd so, be interesting if we did. Yeah. That's what I thought too. Um, so yeah, I, I have, uh, I have, uh, actually four and an honor, an honorable mention or two. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll shake that down to three. I'm still debating which of the, uh, there's I had two. a hard time getting to three. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Then I, I can. I, I, yeah, I, I felt can like brush was, one of these off. It was pretty thin for for my sensibilities. You right. Know, it was as as an executive at HBO Max. Yes. Looking at these terrible ideas, potential content. Terrible. A lot of it feels like weekday night cbs stuff yeah so the way i looked at it is i'm not exactly a network per se i'm the guy that's going to get you in front of networks oh i i went with the idea that i'm i'm buying okay i'm, I'm in the option game right now okay so we'll play it like that we're the option game for for the next round of options for H, hbo max that's right. And okay. I, I, I choose a streaming service and not a network because there's in this list here, there's a mix of features and series proposals. Yes. Yes. Uh, why don't you go first then since it was your idea? Sure. Since you sparked my imagination and I had so much fun doing this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Another away, yeah, so another observation about the list. It's not a jab. Like I said, a lot of it could fall on network television stuff. A lot of it is in the wheelhouse of middle-aged suburban lady. Um, I'm not that. So that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for something that I would sit down and give my time to. Right. I will go ahead and say from the jump, three of the four I pulled all involve murder. Mm. And my two, my two, uh, so honor right now. my murder. two honorable mentions involve murder. So I have a wheelhouse too. I'm the, wow. when they walk in, when they walk into our office, they look at me and they're like, I'm pitching him my murder shit because he looks I, like... I, he I feel like the the true crime bug is getting to you a little bit. Yeah, but murder with a twist. With a twist. You know, hipster murders. A knife. I'm a into knife hipster twist. murder. That's right. Barista murder, if you will. All right. All right. Sure. I'll go backwards. I did, I did rank Oh, you mine. ranked. Ooh. Okay. So you don't have to do that. You can sh you can drop whatever you want. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. So uh, the property I'm interested in third most as a well-paid HBO Max executive. Yes. Um is a series by John Burshad, uh, which he calls Sexy Teen Squad, colon, Undercover Monster Hunters. Um, We're going to have to workshop option, that title. Yeah, option condition. Change that fucking title. Yeah. We'll figure it out in the room. Yeah. I, it also says here that it's a... It's 32 pages. It's a TV script and animated. And I'm going to drop that shit right now. We're not animating this. It's 32, if I'm putting... So this, half I, hour, this is going to my service. Right. This half is, hour live action. Yeah. That's what this is. 
Yeah. I, I, it's it's 28 minutes an episode. Yeah. Uh, Monster of the Week sort of stuff uh, with uh, an overarching season story uh, well, a la Buffy or well, listen, uh, Bob, I, anything I like seen, that. I haven't seen anything on this yet, Bob. Can you read me the log line? Can you read me the elevator pitch? So here is what John says. I assume that the writer is also writing these little sales bits because sure. Alanda, a, a lot of them and with Alanda. think blank meets blank. Yes. Um, so maybe they're not because I would like to think a veteran professional writer is not going to actually write that. And that's an agent throwing that in. No, that's how you're taught to pitch things is pair things up. <laughs> John writes, horror movies got it right. Ghosts, monsters, and supernatural serial killers are real. And for some reason, they only want to kill sexy teenagers. I'm saying. Strike back. The government has put together a crack squad of undercover teens assigned to travel from town to town and lure the monsters out in this animated combination of Cabin in the Woods and 21 Jump Street. Okay, I can see it. I can see it in my head. I get it. I know what it is. This is horror comedy. It's uh, it's it's Shaun of the Dead. It's Evil Dead Two. It's Buffy. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is something I can sell. This is something I think is watchable a half hour at a time once a week. Yeah, I can do this. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I what I want is a cast of unknowns for the leads. Uh, I'm gonna spend my money elsewhere. I'm gonna spend my money in uh, special effects. Yeah, effects, practical effects, uh, set design, props. Um, the only casting note I have is maybe like Carla Gugino as the government handler because she's in everything and she's she's pretty okay really in everything yeah, yeah i saw her in a uh, gunpowder milkshake recently and yeah yeah fantastic spy kids she's in all yeah. the mike flanagan stuff yeah um and then i would i wouldn't pay for a name lead male actor for the main monster bad guy, whoever it's going to be, if it's going to be a Dracula or a, a, a Dr. Frankenstein or whatever. Um, so I, I, whoever that might be, um, you know, uh, probably a horror vet. Uh, I don't know. Robert England, uh, Kids don't uh, give a shit about Robert England, Bob. Uh, who the fuck else is is like a, a, a horror name? I, I'm going to cast John Carpenter because he looks like the Crypt Keeper already. Yeah, he saved some money there, too. So yeah, he'll also do the music for free. There you go. So what's your target audience here, Bob? Or how sexy are we going to get sexy? Is this is this for a teenage? Is it a Buffy audience or is it a, a True Blood audience? Hmm. I think this is probably hitting teen young adult. I, I would imagine it's the same the same uh, viewership that watches something like Riverdale or okay. Sabrina. So so or so. Uh, so titillatingly sexy, not not nude sexy, not uh, in your face. Right. 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 Implied. Over the pants. That's right. I also just had a great casting idea for you, Bob. Peter Fascinelli as it's the season Robert, one bad guy. By the way. Peter Fascinelli as the season one bad guy. Peter Fascinelli. Yeah. Why? Twilight Sell bad me. guy. Twilight bad guy. Right. He's no. he's known to be bad guys. And no. he's affordable. We're on a budget. Oh. He's affordable. Oh, he's we affordable. We can get him. We can get him. I'm already paying for craft services. That's all I need. 
All right. So you got your monster of the monster of the week, uh, a half hour sitcom, not a sitcom, half hour, uh, I guess, comedy horror. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it would be something. Yeah, it, it would be that it's 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 a 13 episode season, you know, five or six monster of the week episodes devote the rest of them to advancing the uh the overarching season plot bing bang boom you know they, this this is not an expensive show right solid content well under budget right well well within budget all right not breaking the bank no okay uh so I'll start with my number three. Man, this is a tough one because I got two that are just right there. But all three of mine are similar, so I'm going to go with the one that's not similar. Mm -hmm. uh, this young kid walked into my office. His name was Joel L. Brewster. Uh-huh. And he has a short sci-fi movie, 40 pages. Uh, we're going to turn that into a 10-episode prestige series. Joel, I, oh, we're not doing I any shorts. Fluff. We're not doing any shorts. It's called Film. The Ark. Yeah, it's called The Ark. Uh-huh. Uh, so here's the log line. Tell me. Uh, waking up with no memory and forced to yeah, face until disaster. until I finish this drink. And forced to face disaster around every corner, a lone teenage girl fights for survival against dangerous aliens on a doomed colossal spaceship. So listen, nothing news here. It's combining okay. a lot of stuff. It's combining a lot of stuff I like. Uh-huh. Um, I love the idea of a generation ship, personally. Yep. Yes. Uh so yeah. this could be a fun sci-fi sci-fi horror project, uh -huh. right? So yes, you take you, you throw out your short and you adapt this into a ten episode streaming uh -huh. show. And then the, the the bulk of the show is her trying to find out her past, what is happening because she doesn't remember anything. Mm. Oh, okay. God. Amnesia here's, though. Yeah, but here's the here's this the, here's isn't the full thing. house. No, here's the thing. Supporting characters only pop up in video. She has access to the log videos of the ship. Mm. So she learns about things from watching these videos. There's no other actors except for her and the and the monsters. Uh, so she's the only one kind of uh, we see on the ship. And then at the season finale, she because, I mean, a colossal generational ship is going to be the size of a city. So the season finale, she finally gets down to where the rest of the the rest of her people are the cryo chamber. You know, think like the Matrix, but they're asleep, right. not yeah. whatever. Okay. Um, so that's the season finale. She discovers them. But the hook of the the hook with the alien monsters, at first I was like, let's leave them mysterious. Let's let's not explain it. But then I was like, you can't have a series where you don't explain it. So you explain it this way. When the first when the ship first took off, the cryo beds failed for the first generations and they were and generation and they were woken up. They didn't have shielding for all the radiation they were getting. They weren't supposed to to be awake then, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like a Lord of the Flies mutation thing. Over generations, they mutated these happened, aliens. But okay. Right, but I'm saying, Lord, like there's some cannibalism. There's some mutation. There's it's like a tribal warfare and shit. They mm -hmm. do, they they evolve into these things that look like aliens, but they're just uh, I generations. Don't think I've ever read the book generations of mutated humans uh so that those are the bad guys quote unquote uh and so she's surviving this while trying to figure everything out while in this giant ship that's in the middle of nowhere i mean she's not hitting the planet for decades because that's how space is spoiler alert uh i don't know who the star is going to be because i don't know i don't know young actresses these days but sure. my my main direction would be make it more horror, more alien, and less CW teen show. I want it right in the wheelhouse, kind of where your show. It could piggyback on your show. How old? Make it, uh, okay, for your four, lead. 15, 16. 14, okay. 15, 16. I'm, I'm going to throw an idea at you. I'm all I ears. Want, I want you I'm to all think ears, about it. I'm all okay. ears, baby. Yes. McKenna Grace. Dude. I almost wrote her name down, but I wanted to leave it open for other ethnicities. But McKenna she's Grace fantastic. is great. Perfect. Yes. Isn't she in Hill House or she's in something? I Googled it. She is. Remember. She was also on a couple episodes of this past season of Handmaid's Tale. Yes. 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 She was great in Handmaid's Tale. She was great. Yes. Great. All right. That's um, it. Attach, okay. attach Miss Grace. 
I'm going to do your budget a favor. And I'm going to propose you drop the aliens. You can't have 10 episodes no of her just, her just walking around. It's not around. just her, though. So make it Lord of the Flies on the generation ship. Tribes. Yes. But then that's kind of like the if CW's people 100. People are a person. Dexter in space. There's a serial killer. Okay, so maybe she finds like three other kids and then they start getting picked off. But one of them has to be the killer. Or does it? It is a big ship. It's a ship the size of Brooklyn. You're not going to meet everyone right away. Right. Right. And yeah. And yeah. Uh, low impact effects with a, with a setting that large. Um, so that's nice. Uh, um, Robert, Robert, I think I hear a cricket in your office. Hmm. I'm just bored. Yeah, I like I like this, and, and I'm willing to listen to notes. We don't need aliens necessarily, but there needs to be a threat, and it can't be. I don't want it to be like that movie. Uh, was it Travelers or whatever? With uh, I don't want it to be like that. I think passengers is the one you're referring to. Yes, um, which I am secretly a big fan of. I know the rest of the world probably isn't. Uh, the third act is a little bit of a mess. Um, and a little bit is an understatement because it's a fucking nightmare. But the first two acts are great. Okay. Oh, let, okay. So, so if I can't get my aliens and I can't make it, uh, but I still want it to be unique, let's do this. Let's make every season the, another generation. You know? Sure. May, uh, but at some point, people got to wake up. I don't know. I mean, it, look, I'm jumping fine. ahead. We got time. We got time. Uh, we'll I'm jumping ahead. We might not even make it out of pilot season, you know. But that's it. The arc by Joel Brewster. We're going to change some shit up. We're going to get the kid paid, though. And that's what's most important. Get his name on a byline. Get him paid. Get him out of here. I I see it, though. I can see this. There, there's I, there's I just, something here. I just love, uh, you know, even when I'm not producing shows for HBO Max, I love just in general the idea of a generation ship. I, I I honestly think that is our future as a human race. I think yes, that's, what, that's that, the that thing we're going was. Um, I'm going to step out of character here for a moment. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, one of the ideas ages ago that I was playing with was something almost exactly like this. Is why I pitched the No Aliens was was a murder mystery on a generation ship. Um, Cold then, case then files you can on a do, generation shift. Um, yeah, you can do. It's almost like um, small town thing where everybody knows everybody, and there's like the one police chief, and that's it. And yeah, but in space. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. And then all you got to do is build like four or five sets. It actually isn't that expensive, that expensive in a show as a show to put on. No, yeah, and you film outside, like I mean, because uh, you're gonna have farms and shit, so you yeah. can go from setting to setting to setting. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, great, great. Okay, great. it's gonna be great. Okay, out of the shows you were recently pitched, what are you second most excited about? Uh so I am going to give the thumbs up to a feature by Ed Wiles called Daniel Radcliffe Stole My Life. First, first of all, let me jump in here real quick, uh, Robert. Both of what you've said so far, I've read and considered, but I didn't pick them. This is uh, great, by the way. Uh, that the tag here is a struggling actor who just missed out on the role of Harry Potter many years ago sets about usurping and ruining Daniel Radcliffe with an ultimately doomed scheme. This sounds like the easiest thing in the world to sign Daniel Radcliffe up for because that dude <laughs> is into some weird shit. I applaud his choice of projects post Harry Potter 
Yes. Um, because he's not, he was determined not to make himself Harry Potter. He's just Daniel Radcliffe now. And he does some crazy yeah. fun shit. Also, the dude's like a billionaire, so he doesn't have to take whatever. He only does what he wants to do. Yeah. So this seems like a thing he'd be on board for. Uh, I, I, I think I would offer it to James Gunn to write and direct. It seems like um, uh, horror is not the right word, but I don't even know what to call it, like a revenge comedy. I, I, I want something that's going to be funny and specifically mean-spirited. Right. Um, so I'm thinking something like being John Malkovich meets It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. All right. Can I can I throw a, a, a casting? A, can I throw just a weird ass casting choice at you for the lead? I, I know I'm interrupting you right now. What if Daniel Radcliffe pays the character and you get someone who looks like Daniel Radcliffe to play Daniel Radcliffe? Hmm. Or am I just am I just a, would I that just too, confuse audiences? Am I too? Would they not thin? get it? I think it would be funny. What about the kid that played Neville? <laughs> yeah, I take it back. Daniel Radcliffe plays Daniel Radcliffe, but uh, the handsome dude who plays Neville plays the kid who Daniel Radcliffe stole it from. Right. Uh, it, yeah. So I I don't know. I, I I looked up young British male actors. Um, I came up You're with the name Alex Lawther because he was the goofiest looking motherfucker on the Google search. And that's so that, who you want, right? Is that part of the is that part of the joke though? Is that this kid was never going to get the Harry Potter role like he just thinks he was, but he was in no way in contention for it? Um no, like like it, I think it would have been down to him, right? It would have been down to him oh, and so you don't, Radcliffe. What if you got like a fat like a fat Chinese actor and he's pissed that he wasn't <laughs> Harry Potter? Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. We'll kick it around. Yeah, yeah. There's time. We'll we'll workshop it. We'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Well, the running but, joke uh, is he thinks he looks like Daniel Radcliffe, but he's he's Peter Parker's friend in the Spider-Man movies. <laughs> and I realize that guy's not Chinese, and I'm just being racist right now. But I'm just thinking out the box. Yeah, it's um, I I, I in the okay. right hands, I think it could be really something. Okay, so I, I stepped on you there. So your quirky British kid that you found yeah. in your casting in your net of casting, would I know him from anything? Have you ever seen I don't him in know anything? Him from anything? Okay, no, no. But we or, could or, have or, all known him as Harry Potter. Yeah, I mean, you could choose somebody who's also uber successful. It could be Tom Holland or, uh, uh yeah, someone who's had know. a more successful career than Daniel Radcliffe. Whoever they just the really wanted else. to be. Harry yeah. Potter. Right. Right. Tom Hardy. He just really wanted to be Harry Potter. At Tom Hiddleston. All the Toms. Whatever Tom. Pitch me your any, Toms. Any British Tom, we'll look at him. We'll consider them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 that, it's almost, uh, it could be quirky in the way that, uh, what was that show that had, uh, oh God, I do this every podcast. I can't think of their names. The kid from Lord of the Rings was in a show that had a puppet <laughs> or like oh, a dog, dog Willard. Willard. Willard, yeah. Right, so it could be uh it could be uh Frodo. <laughs> yeah, it could be Frodo. <laughs> so no, but it could sorry, it could have that tone of Willard. Like a quirky but is it dangerous? Is it just fun? Is it lighthearted? Is it I, In the end I'm seeing this character our protagonist ending up dead by Daniel Radcliffe's hands. No, no. Uh, I, I, I want to go full on like where you're, you're rooting for him, but then he's going so far and making you so uncomfortable that you're rooting against him. And then in the end, it just becomes tragic, but with a funny circumstance that 
he needs to meet his demise in a really absurd, um, poetic way. Um, and is, so this is sort of uh, uh, a result, I think, something someone like a James Gunn could achieve. Okay. So in your version, would Daniel Radcliffe be like on the on the like on the outside there, just only showing up like I don't know what's going on. I don't know this guy. Would he play it straight or would he be like, Yeah, I took that role from you? Like I did that, I earned that role. Like would you make him be like Oh no, no, like I hardcore? Think, I think they have to play everybody in the movie has to play it like the the the, the protagonist who in in this case is the technically the antagonist um it's gonna say it's me and everybody throughout the movie is gonna say who the fuck are you yeah right. so i think that's how you have to play it yeah you can even have his backstory be like his parents took out a second mortgage when he got like his third callback <laughs> and then he didn't get it and they like lost their flat and shit you know, it's a, they blamed him. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's funny. I saw both of those, and I, both of those intrigued me uh, so far. All right. But that's that's your that's your movie that you're gonna that's gonna that's be that's my a, yes that's my feature day and date HBO or Max is a feature. And, I'm not gonna say it's my my feature not as like it's my only one. Right. But it's it's gonna be a day and date. You're gonna put it in theaters for like a day to try to get to get Oscar eligibility you know, yes but it's gonna be mostly hbo max okay i get it uh all right so my next one uh this gonna one's kind of daniel radcliffe that that hardware that's right give him that gold um yeah so my my next one is uh from uh amanda verway or verwe this is a uh tv uh, sc- uh comedy 30 minute comedy uh, it's called Borderline Depressed. We're gonna we're gonna deal with that in two seconds, because um, that title makes me borderline depressed. Uh, Logline is: Two women are paired up by a therapist to support each other on their wellness journey. They end up killing a man, and it solves all their problems. Sure. So, um, yeah, I saw this. Yeah, it was um, towards the top. I immediately thought of Better Off Dead. On um, okay. Is it Netflix? What what is I don't it well, doesn't Better matter. Off Dead is a doesn't movie. Matter what that's on. Oh okay. no. Um You're Dead to Me is the one I'm thinking of. Christina Applegate oh. and yes. Hawkeye's wife. Yes. I explained this to my wife and she said Lisa the exact Cardinelli? same thing. Yes. When I told my wife about this one, she said the exact same thing. Ah. Uh, but in that they accidentally kill someone and then they cover right. it up. Well We're gonna... Yes. Yes. Our protagonists are going to be active murderers in my show. So, first of all, I, I didn't know that we were working exclusively for HBO. So, if I can't get this on 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 uh, HBO MAX, I could shop it to like FX or basic cable. Doesn't need to be on a premium cable channel or streaming service. But uh, yeah. yeah, just therapy through murder, right? So, like, if if these two ladies are stressed out, they go out and they whack some neighbor who beats his wife. And then they go home and they sleep like the best sleep they've had in years, right? Um, but I hate the name. Borderline Depressed is a terrible name. So call it like uh, like Deep Breaths or like Remain Calm or, you know, some ASMR bullshit. Just something. I thought it was going to be about mentally ill migrants. Uh, so, then, so then I figure you cast like a Christina Hendricks because why not? Uh, cast uh, Jessica Alba. They're the leads. Uh, the, th- the therapist could be uh, uh, one of any two Lauras, Lenny or Dern. Take your pick. That's their therapist. Um, don't fucking start with me. No, no. Uh, um, okay. I don't think you could get Dern for a network show. You could get her for an HBO Max show. Yes. Well, you're saying I could get Lenny for FX, but not Dern? 2021 Laura Lenny probably what is Laura Dern for you lately because she ain't turning down work uh but the first arc for me the first arc is like uh them struggling with the morality of like oh my god we killed somebody 
But then also being like, but we, we've never felt happier. So then they decide, like, as long as we're feeling happy, right? Put mental health first. As long as, you know, think about yourself. <laughs> as long as you're feeling happy, then why not take out, like, you know, so there'd be a scene where they're getting brunch or whatever, because I don't know what suburban women do. I assume all they do is brunch. So let's say they're at brunch and they hear terrible things about, like, you know, uh, Melinda, who's like embezzling money from like the student council or whatever. And they're strat like they're like, oh, everything's difficult. And they kill her and they're like, everything's great. Right. Uh, yeah. They they could do uh, uh, what uh, Helena Bonham Carter does in Fight Club and go sit in in different support groups like spousal abuse support groups. Right. And shit. Pick their pick their victims that way. Yeah. There you go. Uh, you add in some ancillary characters like emotionally unavailable partners, you know, like not bad partners for them, but just like they don't care. They're not there. Uh, you know, terrible children, whatever. Uh, boom. It's it's a hit for women in the 18 to 34 demographic all over the suburbs of America. But I, I, I just love the I, I really hooked on to the um, therapy through murder. The, yes. I, I think this is a um, completely sellable concept. And when I say sellable, I mean to an audience. Um, yeah. P- uh, yes. I, 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 I think this is the sort of premise you can easily get one season out of at least. Yeah, Netflix had that show with uh, Drew Barrymore and Raylan Givens where she became like a fucking cannibal or a zombie. Right. Yeah, I don't and know. That, that ran for like four seasons and they oh were just killing sh- straight up normal people, not even bad people. All right. You know, and that could even be a funny thing. Like they run out of bad people to kill, but they just feel really sad. Like it's been a well, rough and, week. And then they have to trick good people into doing bad things. Yeah, like you leave like... Uh, yeah, like they make like a really good lunch and they put it in the work fridge with their name on it and they just wait for someone to eat it. Right. Getting really nitpicky and yeah, ticky tack sort of. That's offenses. right. Yeah. Then they're going to garrote Larry in his car in the parking garage because he ate their like leftover fucking dim sum. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Christina Hendricks was pretty recently she was in a crime part show of an ensemble crime show i know i just female ensemble crime it show. came right came right to my head so that's not I saying about it. it's a bad choice um i do but yes i i think for you it's a good choice for for her, I think it's going to take convincing because she just did something like this. She might not fuck? want to. Do you represent her, Robert? Like, what are you, I'm just, a fucking agent now? I'm I'm just preparing you that you might have to do some convincing. Quit pissing on my folder of casting ideas. Who right. who would you go with? I, I was trying to get. Yeah, hey, I, I, look, you got, look, look. Oh, settle the fuck down. Look, they gotta they they gotta be in their they gotta be in their forties. They got to be relatively attractive for the audience, but I'm not hung up on any names. I'm not hung up on any uh, ethnicities or body types. What do we got here? Does Adele want to act? Put Adele in there. Oh, perfect. Yeah. There you go. And there we go. Uh, also, Jennifer Hudson. Give me Jennifer also, Hudson if she'll work. Put it in London because people love Brits right now. They do love Brits. Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, either way, it's sold. It's sold in the room. We just got to figure yeah. out the details now. Yeah. All right. Again, also super budget friendly. Oh, yeah. All you need is a fucking neighborhood. Where did they film Desperate Housewives? Do it in that fucking neighborhood. It'll be a little meta. People love it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. One of the people you kill will be Terry Gar or Terry Hatcher. We'll kill Terry Hatcher in episode three. We'll shoot She's- it in Atlanta. Get a tax break. She spiked the muffins. Yeah. All right. Hit me, hit me with your number. We're coming out. We're coming into pitch All season. Right. You got a one, you got one that's gonna hit. Number one. Uh this is a feature pitch by one Paul Sheridan called The Crossing. I'm gonna I you I'm sure you read the beat for it, tag. I, I, I feel like I saw it. Okay. 
I'm going to give it to you. Please do. In, hold on. My eyes aren't so great. This is real small. In a dystopic war-torn America, a veteran races against time to get a mother and her terminally ill daughter across the lawless divide separating North and South in order to save the young girl's life. Okay. Little nitpick, Paul. Uh, I don't think you know what terminally ill means. So we're going to change that. (laughs) Yeah, take off terminally and just say ill. Yeah, because <laughs> we're not racing against time for anything. But th- this one has been one that's st- been stuck in my noggin all afternoon. Yeah. This is, I, I, there's something here. This, uh, th- I'm not, I'm not making a feature. I'm going uh, a one-time prestige. TV limited series. We're doing eight episodes, maybe. Um, and I, I, I would put a lot of. I would put my budget into a cinematographer, and um. <sighs> Set decoration stuff. This is going to be. I want it to be visually, just sort of mesmerizing and stunning. I want the vistas. All right, all right. Just think vistas. Yeah. So, all right. So you want to you want to spend your budget on settings, on shooting, cameras. Right. I, I want the best Scope. of the best. Scope. This is going to be beautiful. This is going to look like a Steven Spielberg movie. Okay. Give me give me some leads and, if you've thought put this much work and into I, it. And I know that I have said previously that I have post apocalypse fatigue. Yes. But this one I think is poignant. I think it's timely. And I think it's super compelling. So just right off the bat, just 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 Immediately, things oh, fuck things that I'm feeling. Um, so the vet. It, it, okay, so this is. Um, uh, I'm gonna do the lame thing. The thing meets thing. Um, post-apocalyptic. So, uh, um, sort of uh, what? Handmaid's Tale, I guess, is is the closest thing. Shut the fuck up. Meets. Um, uh, meets Grand Torino. Okay. Wait, well, there's a grumpy old man in this, or you mean yeah. the vehicle? Oh. The vet. Oh, you're you're going old. You're going old man taking a family across. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to decide how old do I want old to be, though. Um, I was I was having a really tough time coming up with a reasonable casting choice. For the vet, I it, uh, older so, somebody that can do strong, but also sad at the same time. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I, I it, it's re- it was really giving me problems. It's still giving me problems. I wish you shut the fuck up. Uh. <sighs> It, he's not as old as I would like, but I think David Harbour has got that specific sort of range that I'm looking for. Um, I, I don't feel like Jeff Daniels is intimidating enough, um, but probably somebody closer to that age range, though, is what I'm looking for. I want late 50s, maybe pushing 60. I think that's the spot. Yeah, you could get like a guess get someone to take a dramatic turn, get like a like a Bill Murray or something, but he might be oh, past no, his prime. No. I, uh, I I see okay. Um bright character again. I've been seeing a lot of Bill Murray window decals lately. And 
I, uh, I enjoy a lot of his movies, and I think they're usually pretty funny. Bill Murray is kind of a he's kind of a dick, like the man Bill Murray. If he if he's your hero, you know, yeah, just keep driving, bro. He's the reason we didn't get Ghostbusters three while Harold Ramos is alive. All right, sidebar over. Is there, All right, back. Are there, um, are there any are there any car decals of muzzles? <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I, I'm going to pick out um, my gal Kate Siegel right now from. Oh, you're high on Kate Siegel right now. I, I I'm I'm high on all things that have been touched by. Uh, Mike the Flanny. golden fingers of uh, Flanny. I think when I was watching Midnight Mass, this is where our podcast gets in a little trouble because we just like to talk about attractive women and men. But uh, I think when I was watching Midnight Mass, I think I looked at my wife and I just said, like, she's she's so cute that she's sexy. Like, she's so... <laughs> I like, don't know doesn't, what that means. Well, she does, she's not like... Uh, she's not like... Uh, like Elizabeth Hurley, who's still like super sexy, even though she's like fifty or whatever. Like, uh, like Kate Siegel's like forty, and she looks forty, but that makes her even hotter because she looks, she looks like a cute neighbor you could have, or like a you know a, a friend of a friend or something like that. Like she, she looks approachable. She's approachable, attractive. Okay, yeah. I, I, Does that I, make sense? I, I get what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not for me, because I can't talk so, to anybody. Yeah, so I get... Uh, I, I feel like I'm saying David Harbour just because I feel like I have to put a, a casting choice in here, even though I I would not offer him the part. What about like a Guy Pierce? Is he not a big enough name for your little project? I don't, I don't buy him as, as this. So my my vet is going to be a lifelong evangelical conservative, older, um, either just widowed as a result of the the conflict, or maybe it might be too on the nose, but it may be more appropriate for him to have just lost his daughter to the conflict. That, that might be too much. To me, it seems like I like I like uh, people who do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, and that seems like a cheap way to get your guy to do it. Like, uh, it like, uh, like, this is, but I I think that part is why I want to make a series out of it. I want to do eight hours instead of two because I think it's really important for your leads to be people and not caricatures of things. Right. So like my thing would be like, let's make this vet like not, he, he did what he normally, he doesn't have much in common with this family. It would be out of his realm of what he normally would do to help them. But there's gotta be a moment where he realizes like no one else will do it. And it, it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to do it, even though I don't want to, he should be reluctant to do it. Kind of like Gran Turismo. He should be reluctant. He should be grumpy. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mark Ru Mark Ruffalo just popped in my head. Oh no! Okay, he's too small in stature. Again, oh. he's not. He doesn't emit strength. You know, he's not intimidating. I, I he's not the guy sitting at the end of the bar who you'd rather not talk to. Maybe the dude from. Um... He's in Avatar and in those blind horror movies. He's the star of those blind horror oh, okay. movies. Okay, that's closer. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. I was going to ask you if you were going to take because it's because it says going from the north to the south. I was going to ask you: Are you would or would you put a spin on it with modern derisive politics? Would that have led to maybe the dystopian world? Oh yes. Yes. A new yes. civil war would have caused the environment they're in. Right. Um, 
Yes. I, I Robert, think you, you don't, you don't you, mind, you don't mind if I drink during the meeting, right? Um, uh, no, as long as it's Bay Bridge. <laughs> Right. We have a first look deal with Baybridge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I stepped on you again because I wanted to drink my Baybridge. Yeah, it would. It, yes, the current divisiveness in America blows up, causes this thing, and then you get a, a, a Tea Party Republican to not use the name I don't want to use. You get a Tea Party conservative who has to. You know, maybe the mom is hippie. You can even have scenes where the mom is like super hippie. The kid is super hippie. Yeah. So I haven't gotten into that. Sorry. Um, the I mother myself. Uh, definitely Kate Siegel. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm backing up the Brinks truck. We're gonna get her. Right. This project's not getting made unless she signs on. That's right. Yes. Um. So she's going to be the gay adoptive parent of a Chinese born girl who will have lost her partner in the conflict. Uh, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to uh, hit heavy on themes of, you know, finding common ground, division, faith, tolerance, yeah. the, the, can we come together? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? No. Would you be willing to go so far as to have the child be uh, not necessarily non-binary, but just not gender specific? Never relate to the child by gender. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Really, let's really piss off some a certain part of the population. Leave it open yeah. for interpretation. Yeah, I get it. You could even have a scene where he could even see like it's not your, it's not really your kid. Why are you so invested in this? And then she could educate him on just being a human. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll have to figure out what uh, what the what the need is. Why um, I assume they're going north. Well, wait. Doesn't the doesn't no, the tagline no, say it, going it, no, south? No, no. It says across the lawless divide separating north and south. Oh. Now, um, see, there's another twist. What if they have to go south? What if the best geneticist? Is in fucking like uh, Muscle Shoals or fucking Montgomery. Uh, yeah, well, well, I I'll have to do my research and find um, pockets, right? Of of yeah, you know, blue pockets in the yeah. Red South. Speaking of pockets, let's 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 jump out of our characters here for a minute. Break the fourth wall. Uh, you know how uh, Oklahoma has the Panhandle. Mm -hmm. The reason they have the panhandle is because when Texas formed statehood, they wanted to be a slave owning state and you can't own slaves. You couldn't own slaves over a certain parallel based. So they, they seceded that part to Oklahoma and they cut Texas short by those like 40 miles or whatever so that they could own slaves. They, they shortened the, the size of their state so they could be slave owners. Uh, you do yeah. you oh. Texas. Also, uh, uh, to get back into character, my thought of what it has to be everything bigger in Texas. It has to be north like to south. Like racism. Yeah, it has to be north to south because your racist dude wouldn't be in the north already. So you'd well, have well, they're they're like like I've learned uh, watching um, a lot of Steve Kornacki. Much of the country, like square yeah. mileage wise, is red. Yes. So yeah, so you could have a rural part of New York or something like that, or sure. or maybe maybe he traveled north to commit domestic terrorism, and on his way back decides to help them. There's a lot. Yeah, to I don't know. Here. I'm going to have to figure out his character. I don't know. Yeah. Is is he kind of? How how hard does he believe this stuff? Was the his wife the the MAGA -er and he kind of just uh, it, I don't know I, I I don't see him as a real true believer in things like he people are people he just wants to live leave me the fuck alone I'll do what I do yeah, you do yeah. what you do 
Right. He doesn't have to be a militant MAGA guy. Maybe he's just a dude who's like never was exposed to these. He's grossed out by same sex marriages because he's never been around one. Right. Yeah. So maybe something like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. More libertarian than brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time he'll just be telling this like poor Chinese kid about like why he doesn't pay taxes and he has his own fucking country. Yeah. 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 He, he's got you know, property somewhere, you know, the neighbors are two miles away or whatever. Yeah. That sort of thing. And yeah. they're on some uh, underground railroad, all of these liberals on their way back up to New York City or, you know, wherever the fuck. Yeah, possibly Utica, where the long drink is brewed. Oh, callback. Yeah, I like that's that. A, I that's a showbiz term. That almost made my uh, all all three of your picks. I noticed, and that one almost made my pick. But I di- I actually one of the reasons I didn't choose it because you're so tired of dystopian shit. Mm. Yeah, so I purposely, no, but I, 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 I the premise really struck me as being like yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, it's topical. There's some uh, Book of Eli shit in there. There's some uh, yeah. All that good stuff. I like a good road trip. I like a good dystopian thing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. And the Handmaid's Tale is hot. I mean, both popular and sexy. So, and becoming more and more topical as each season rolls on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any final thoughts on the crossing? Uh, that that name sounds a little uh, religious. So you might want to workshop ooh, that. Ooh, that's not bad. Um, yeah, I'm not married to it, so we'll uh, call it Mason. Mason, we'll, we'll see if something else comes up. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, the line or Mason Dixon, something like that. Piggly yeah, Wiggly. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll come up with something. All right. Any final thoughts, or should I go? Uh, go for it. All right. So my last one I'm going to go with is a dude who actually all three of his were good. Uh, so I had to pick. I mean, this guy had three good ideas. And had I been a premium member, I could have seen other of his ideas, but I could only see the three. Uh, uh, Michael Noonan. And I'm going with a feature comedy. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, I, I, again, I, I want to turn all these into series, but I think this one I left to film. Uh, called Child Proof. Okay. Feature comedy. Let's throw dark in there for one thing. Um, uh-huh. When all their friends start young families and their dinner party lifestyle is ruined, a wealthy couple hires an assassin to kill all the children and restore the adults only decadence that completes them. Mm. So this is in the vein of like uh, these, these adult comedies that are big now. Bridesmaids, uh, Bad Moms. You know, it gets mm-hmm. kind of in that thing. Uh, yeah. So uh, my first my first sentence is, this is fucking great. Like, this guy should get all the money just for this idea. Uh, so uh, so my thought, my general thoughts are like, the, the couple are our, our antagonists were really, or sorry, our protagonists who are antagonists, they're terrible people. Like, they'll show up with a casserole to the, to the wake of the child and then like ask the parents like, Hey, a new brewery open. Like, what are you guys doing Saturday? Like, a new brewery opened, right? Like, like, because as someone uh, personally, as someone who like all of his friends had kids later in life, and I had my kids earlier in life. Every time I want to hang out with my friends, they're like, "Oh, I got a soccer game or a basketball game or whatever," and I'm like, "God damn it!" Like, I just want to hang out. Uh, so it's kind of like that. Like, uh, so you cast people in their 30s. Uh, I got Michael B. Jordan and Emma Watson as the main couple. Okay. Uh, you know, everything, everything is going well, but then like, uh, maybe there's like a neighborhood watch guy who catches on. So not only do they have detectives snooping around, you have a neighborhood watch snip, snip uh, uh, like snip, uh, sniffing around, you know? Uh, so then they have like, they have to dodge like the detectives and handle the neighborhood watch because maybe they're part of the neighborhood watch. So they're supposed to be investigating what else is happening. Mm. Uh, my two detectives are Eva Longoria and uh, Zach Guilford from Midnight Mass. Uh, and from uh, he was in that football show, Friday Night Lights. Uh, 
you know, and then uh, Dave Bautista heads up the neighborhood watch because, you know, ex -mil you know, maybe ex military dude just wants to fuck people up, but he didn't become a cop. He became head of the neighborhood watch. Uh, and then like the other parents who, whose kids are murdered, you just get some funny actors in there, like a Nick Offerman, a Jake Johnson. Like you just get some comedic actors in there. Uh, but it, so it's a comedy, but it should be played like super real and super dark. Like, I don't know if you ever saw a couple of years ago, Nick Cage and Selma Blair did a movie called Mom and Dad, where like a vi an airborne virus hit and parents just started murdering their children. <laughs> no, it's fucking great. It's, it's so fucking good. So, so, so yeah, in the, in the vein of Mom and Dad, it's it's like a super violent, just like uh Super violent, like comedy, though. Like they just want to hang out with their friends, and these kids are getting in the way. So let's murder all the kids. <laughs> I think it could be a huge hit in suburban markets. You know, Aurora, Illinois. Uh, you know, Scottsdale. No, not Scottsdale. Like Mesa, <laughs> Arizona. You know, like. Uh, yeah. I, I, as soon as I read this, I was like, "This has got to be it." I don't know about the name "childproof" because it it to me that doesn't talk about where we're going and this. Yeah. Like, uh, so maybe workshop that a little bit. But uh, I think the uh, the fantasy idea of it would resonate a lot with uh, with younger parents, hipper parents who aren't going to take it literally. Sure, like my parents would be like aghast at a show, a movie <laughs> like this. But, you know, like a parents in their 30s, they would get a kick out of this. This would be a cult classic. There'd be a drinking game involved in this. It would be shown for years on the indie circuit. I think this is a no brainer. This is a drop dead, huge streaming hit. <laughs> and again, put it in theaters for a day for Nick Offerman to get a Academy Award nomination for best supporting yeah, actor. Um, it's, it's, um, it, it's an advertising department's dream. This movie is going to sell itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah. It, it, it feels, um, it feels like it could have or benefit from the energy of maybe a Ryan Reynolds casting in one of the it's, leads. It's too much though. It at that point it becomes a Ryan Reynolds movie and not a movie. Maybe go a little less. Maybe, maybe do a Charlie Day. Maybe do a. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was also thinking like you can even have a scene where it's not just kids. Like maybe they're a brewery full of dogs, and then the next thing I, you I, know, like there's a bunch of dead dogs. I, <laughs> I, the dogs should stay at home, not in breweries. I yeah. I I think. You have to have like a super shorthand charming inform shorthand information wise for you to be able to communicate the tone of the premise is going to be, I think, who you cast okay. in that lead. Like, like when when you see a Charlie Day or you see Ryan Reynolds, you know that this is going to be. Okay, just so maybe it just pump your brakes. All yeah. right, so maybe maybe yeah. move like a Jason before Sudeikis. you clutch your pearls. Just hear right. me out. So maybe a Jason Sudeikis or a Jake Johnson in the main in the lead role. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Michael B. Jordan's too intense. You don't yeah, look I at don't him. Know at, you don't look at him and think comedy. Comedic chops, right? Are. Um, who else? Um. Yeah, I thought of Jason Sudeikis, but at this point he's like over forty, but he could still play young. Did you say Emma Watson? Yeah, but maybe she's not funny enough. Maybe a Rose Byrne, but then we get into that. They already That's did neighbors with her. Yes, we already yeah. did that. Um, so maybe a Sudeikis and like a Kristen Wiig as your leads, or uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, I think you're right. I think I need to rethink this. The leads have to be known for being funny. Otherwise, this from the jump comes off as problematic. 
Yeah. 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 I, I, yes. So, um, when people are talking and they say, have you seen the new trailer for the Seth Rogen movie about blah? You want them to go, Oh my God, not, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like a Jonah Hill as your lead. He has lost some weight. Yeah. You almost got to look. No, I was going to say something terrible there. (laughs) I'm not going to say it. Uh, Yeah. You're right. You got to cast a funny, uh, funny couple, you know, and people that are known to be funny. Your leads, your two leads are key here because you have to be able to look at the poster and know, oh, it's going to be like a dark comedy. Yeah. I, I think oh, maybe, maybe a Bill, like a Bill Hader. I was thinking Cecily Strong is ready for a star making role. I was thinking the same thing. She was just in Shemigadoon or Shemigadoon, Mega Shemigadoon. <laughs> Shmigadoon, Shmigadoon, Shmigadoon. She was on right. Shmigadoon and was great on it. So yeah, maybe a Bill Hader, Cecily Strong couple. They don't hate kids. They just like fun. Yeah, they're just tired. Yeah, and maybe maybe let them have kids. Maybe maybe their kids are like teenage, like shitty teenagers. And they can go out, and none of their friends will let their shitty kids babysit for them, so their friends never go out anymore. That's right. So um, they gave them a chance. They gave their friends a chance. Their friends didn't take it, so now their kids got to get murked. Yeah, um, it's an interesting uh, challenge for a, uh, a screenwriter and a director to get an audience on the side of the parent that wants to murder yeah. their children. Well, you also got to cast, uh, you also got to write and cast these children as just monsters. That's another thing. You can't, you can't be murdering like straight A, like honor roll fucking uh, like nine year olds. You know, you got to be, you got to be murdering kids at like, at, at like 10 or just purposely like wiping their feces on the wall and shit. Those are the kids that got to go in my movie, not mm-hmm. in reality. Because here at HBO Max, at the offices of Robert, and we never named me, so me and Robert, oh, yeah. Productions LLC, no, yeah. uh, we don't advocate for murdering children. No. No, no. I'm advocating for, for dropping uh, $10 million into producing a film. That's right. We do pay parental leave, not, not, just, not just maternity leave. That's right. Yeah, if you're a piece of shit and you just want to take a couple months off because your wife did all the work, you know, you're welcome to it. You lazy piece of shit. Yeah, I think, I actually think, I think this is a, I think this movie will be made in the next five years. <laughs> I'm certain of it. I just hope that I'm part of the package. You know, I hope I get an exec produce, you know, maybe co-write. Who knows how much work I do? You know, maybe I get a credit in there somewhere. Maybe I get a cameo. Yeah. You, know? you could be the architect of the, uh, cinematic child murder universe that's right maybe we're maybe we have a scene at like a fucking chuck e cheese and one of these kids chucks a fucking ski ball and it hits me and i turn around i'm like hey man and they're like sorry bro and i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> if you ki- cameo if you kill the sorry bro like dad who's, hitchcock yeah if if the kid who throws the ski ball hits me in the head and you kill his parents they don't learn a lesson you kill that kid, and that guy learns a fucking lesson about how to raise his child. Yeah, try again, asshole. Yeah, so we're going to change the name of this from childproof to parenting lessons. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are my three. Uh, I really dig this one. I'm a big fan of this one. Um, don't read too much into that. I'm just, I'm trying to make money for the network. You know, I'm trying to keep my office lush trying to keep myself in baybridge you know i'm trying to keep That's myself right. loaded yeah. in baybridge you know this shit isn't quite free and we can't keep it stocked you know unless we sell some projects that's right mm-hmm. well i i think we got some winners i think we do as well and it's it's been a long podcast it's been about as long 
as uh, one of our movies needs to be. A tight hour and a half. That's right. 90 minutes in and out. That's right. That's how I, that's how I live my life. Yep. Yes. Uh, all right. This was fun. I like this. We'll have to do something like this maybe for comics. There's a bunch of articles about uh, pitches of comics that never went anywhere. Really? But then I feel like we're talking shit about peers, and I don't know if we could do that, so maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see where it lands at some point. Speaking of where shit lands, how is your uh, whiskey sour with your uh, 101? Oh, no. It's well, it's not, it's not the 101. It's the 100 proof bottle and bond, Evan Williams. No, uh, it's good. Um, I had been making them with um, the, the bottle of sewer water that I got for Father's Day, the uh, Jim Beam, but I finished that. So um, this is markedly better. Yes. So oh, I, you know I, 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 I mean, it's a cocktail. I can't really give it a number other than it's good. I ship it, you know. All right. We'll say a three. What, what, I don't even know. What do we rate? What do we rate up to five? Let's just say a four. Yeah, it's good. Whatever. We don't do that anymore. Anyways, I yeah. was, uh, I was, I've never, I never buy uh, makers because it's more money than I like to spend for a bottle. I don't even know what a bottle costs, but I'm super cheap. I know that I can get bottled and bond Evan Williams for like 20 bucks. And right. I know makers is more than that. So I never buy. Yeah. It's like 27 bucks. So I was at a bar last weekend and I, I asked the lady, the, you know, the, the woman who was bartending and I said, yeah, let me get a whiskey on the rocks. What's your, you know, what's your well, what's your well bourbon or whatever. And she's like, and I said, how much is it? She's like, it's five bucks, but it's 10 high. And I was like, Okay. And she's like, and I'm like, okay. And then she's like, but for six bucks, you could have makers. Makers is all time six bucks. And I drank makers on the rocks last weekend. And it might've been one of the smoothest bourbons I've had. It's, it, it's a famously weeded whiskey. So it is, it's going to be mellower. It's going to be yeah, softer. I enjoyed it. I'm still not going to spend $27 on a bottle when I can get a stronger bottle for $20. Yeah, I was thinking about it the other night while I was mixing shit up. Like the 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 ten dollar bottles. E dub is king. Yes. And up to twenty, I'm gonna take one oh one every time. But then you get into like twenty to forty and your options just explode. And there there's so much good stuff. Anything over forty, I'll never know. But twenty to forty, right. oh man. But I don't want to take a, a risk. Wonderland. I don't want to take a risk on a thirty-two dollar bottle and not love it. Well, but you like the makers a lot. I did. Right. I enjoyed it a lot. It had no bite to it. You know, I sipped it and didn't have it. Didn't have any bite. Right. So I dug it. Did you drink the? Uh, oh, maybe I should. Maybe maybe we should put this at the end of the podcast in case I need to cut it out. Uh, never mind. So I give the long drink a uh, uh, it's a solid four. It tastes like grapefruit juice and it's eight and a half percent. It is perfect. Tart. It is tart. It is delicious. It's not as filling as an IPA. It's as strong as a Deepa. It's double Imperial or you are double India Pale Ale or Imperial, whatever you guys know. I like the design of the can. Very minimalistic. Tells you what it is. It's like a Dharma yeah. drink. It looks I like you it. made it. Yeah. It does. It's got the same level of uh, skill and design that I have. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a four. I dig it. Um, yeah, this was fun. Cool. All right. Yeah. It's your job. Good. It's your job now. You you, yeah. you you wrap it up every week for us. It's yeah. Your turn. Um, go, go watch all the Mike Flanagan shows. Give him all of your money. Wow. Give Netflix all your money. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all the it, good yeah, fun. and if 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 you run into them, just you know, just mention my name. 